He that searches the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. Is that an amazing scripture? Do you hear? Do you hear what he's saying there? Do you see that he puts in the desire, and he draws them out if we let them, let them. God puts in the desire, and he draws it out if we let him. Steps to Christ. I want to read to you a little something from Steps to Christ. While I'm getting there, I should have just printed this off, I suppose. But Steps to Christ, chapter 3, and page 34. This is a tiny little book, but so, so powerful. Amen? Chapter 3, Utter, Utterable Love. Christ is ready to set us free from sin. Do you hear that? Christ is ready to set us free from sin. But he does not force the will. And if by persistent transgression the will itself is wholly bent on evil, and we do not desire to be set free, we do not what? desire to be set free, if we will not accept His grace, what more can He do? We have destroyed ourselves by our determined rejection of His love. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Today, if you will hear His voice, harden not your hearts. Man looketh upon man looketh onward on, on the onward appearance, outward appearance, sorry. But the Lord looketh on the heart, the human heart, within its conflicting emotions of joy and sorrow, the wandering, wayward heart, which is of old of so much impurity and deceit. First Samuel 16, 7. He knows its motives, its very intents and purposes. Go to him with your soul, all stained as it is, like the psalmist. Throw its chambers open to the all-seeing eye. Exclaim, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Many accept an intellectual religion, a form of godliness, when the heart is not cleansed. Let it be your prayer. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Desires alone, brothers and sisters, will not change you. They will not change you. You know, I fear that we come at things from such a bias that it skews our whole thought process. I have a friend who has an ice cream business. And this individual will look at the weather report to see, well, should I go out and work or not? And if he finds the weather report that he likes first, then he doesn't go to work. But, if it says it's going to be sunny and beautiful, he may search for another brother report. Until he finds one with a little gloom. And says, ah, I'll choose that one. We're not going out today. Forget that. Do you, do you hear what I'm saying? Many people approach the Bible that way. They approach the Bible from this deep-seated understanding that's all screwed up, or they want to find what they want the Bible to say. And they go into the Bible looking for exactly what they want it to say. Is that how we should study our Bibles? How do we study our Bibles? 
from an open mind, with the Holy Spirit, allowing Him to talk to us, right? Why does Jesus say you have to come to me as little children? Why, why little children? Because their minds are not filled up with junk, right? How am I going to teach something to somebody that knows everything? How do you learn? Why do you think the scribes and the Pharisees were so proud? Because they knew so much. How could this boy teach us? I mean, they were amazed at the things he said, the things that he said. Jesus was in the synagogue at, what, 13 years old? And the Bible says they were amazed by him. Huh. When are we going to be in a position that we desire to the point that it's a conviction, that it becomes a longing, a passion that drives us to Jesus. I mean red hot love. The kind that some new convert has when he comes in or she comes in. And they're on fire. And everybody's like, ooh, settle down. Settle down. What, what, what happened in that upper room? What happened? You had a people that weren't full of themselves anymore. They weren't biased anymore. They were wide open, weren't they? They were broken men. Longing for their master. With such desire and passion that they did exactly what they were told to do was wait. They studied and prayed, broken hearted. And what happened? In 10 days, what happened? <clears throat> when they left that room full of the Holy Spirit. Do you realize that the, the only thing that God is waiting for is this upper room experience again to happen in His church? Amen. In this upper room experience to happen in His church. And when it does, his people will walk out of there full of the Holy Spirit and turn the world upside down in a moment, in a very quick time. You know, the Bible says that the gospel went to the whole world. Twelve men. Twelve men. What do we call it? We call it the latter rain, right? <laughs> Don't we call it the latter rain? But do we desire the latter rain? Rain. Well, it's easy to say, well, I desire it. I want it. I'm like Peter. I really want to stay awake, Lord. I want to pray with you. But I'm so tired. I just got to go to sleep. How much do I really desire? How about the guy and gal that just got together? And boy, are they in love. Do they sleep at all? I don't think so. They're always talking about each other. They're going places together. They want to be with each other. And all they do is talk about one another. Right? What's that? Is that desire? Huh? Is that longing? Is that motivation? Is that passion? Where is that for Jesus? Where are we? How long do we want to stay here? Because it's not Jesus' will that we continue on the way we've done. You know, if we continue to do what we've always done, we'll get what we've always gotten. Right here. I aim that we really get serious about the passion for Jesus Christ. And not just say it, but really mean it, desire it. To stay on our knees a little bit longer. <clears throat> To check out that list that we wrote and say, whoa, wait a minute. Is that really what it should be? What should be first? I'm not, I jotted down a few things, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not, I'm not judging anybody. I'm not telling anybody anything. It's God's job. What about secret prayer? Is that on your list? What about being right with God? Is that on your list? How about purity of soul? How about Bible study? Was any of them on your list? Brothers and sisters, I'm just saying that we aren't right. And we need Jesus. 
And He's the only one that can fix us. And if we don't desire Him, how can He do it? How can He do it? We're only going to get what we really desire, brothers and sisters. And I think you know that. It, it, it's really pretty common sense. But we don't think about the elementary things. What you really desire is what you're going to get. You know, they teach that to salespeople. <laughs> People don't buy what they need. They buy what they want. Okay? You will see somebody walk through the door and you're a salesman. All you've got to do is find out what they want. Forget about what they need. You find out what they want. You can sell it to them. Am I lying? Brothers and sisters, let us follow Christ. Let us finish this work. Let us be on fire for Jesus. Our closing song is 524.
and you could come. We thank you, Father, for your Son, that you've given him, that your Holy Spirit is here with us now, and if he is more willing to lead us and to guide us, then we are willing to even ask. Father, forgive us. In Jesus' name.